Hey guys, and welcome to a crosswind landing tutorial and takeoff in the Hornet. And the first thing I want to do is uh, is uh, make sure your radar altimeter is on. So we'll double click that, and you'll see a little box pop up up here. Uh, let's get a wind check from the tower. So T T, and then uh, we'll do uh, number four. Hornet one one, moon sound approach one eight zero two four knots. Okay, 180 at 24 knots. So if you look down at your um, horizontal situation indicator here, the winds are from the south at 24 knots. So that's pretty strong, and we can expect the aircraft to be pushed to the uh, to the left when we take off here. So let's get to it. All right, and I notice uh, you should keep nose wheel steering on past 70 knots or uh, at 70, disable it, and that will just give you. Uh, some authoritative steering. So there's 70. We can go ahead and disable it and use uh, aerodynamic forces with our rudder. So 140 is when I like to just start very gentle pull up and watch that water line. Don't go above 5 up. Nice, gentle, easy pull up. We're going to keep the gear in the down position during this flight. And we'll climb up to, we'll try to maintain between. 220 and 230 and the climb here uh, up to pattern altitude at about a thousand feet so I'm going to start my turn here at 700 but whatever's comfortable for you and there's a thousand feet on the radar altimeter you can see our HSI uh, or excuse me our flight path indicator is kind of all over the place right now it's just because we have some turbulence so we'll do a nice turn to the left, you can see my wingman trying to stay in formation here. I'll tell him to return to base. Hornet, one, return to base. Three, airborne. Alright, so mostly visual. Two, I'm a dot. Three. And here's Hornet, a, one, two, inbound for landing. Here's a down when I'm a little bit low. Four, airborne. Hornet, 1-3, inbound for landing. And, uh, so what I was talking, I'll freeze the uh, sim for just a second here. Uh, you can see what I was talking about with the whole uh, uh, flight path indicator. So these two control your ghost vector. Now, in the real Hornet, there's a ghost vector, uh, which is a copy of this flight path indicator, and you'll see it kind of move around. And your HUD stays centered. Uh, the only thing that moves uh, w with the wind correction is this little tiny replica, and it'll show you how the wind's pushing it. Uh, but in this sim, it actually uses the F-16s system, and if you toggle this, you can see since the wind is coming from the uh, from the south, it's pushing us to the right. So there's south right down there, and the aircraft is uh, is being pushed to the right. So uh, you can center it. This is a toggle, and this is actually uh, just select the ghost vector or the wind correction. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll leave it in wind correction as we come in for a landing. And I'll, I'm trying to stay under 240. That's the maximum gear extension speed. So 220, 230 is pretty comfortable. Just watch your watch your speed. Make sure you don't go past 250. And we'll make our left turn here. Just trying to keep the runway in sight. And you do need a good amount of power. Not an afterburner. Hornet 13, <laughs> descend to 5,000. Maintain 250 knots. Turn left heading 060, runway 14. And right now we could start thinking about getting getting our donut getting on speed as we make this turn you do want you want some power in the turn cuz you know we're heavy and there's 200 I overshot just a little bit it's okay uh, I know that winds gonna push me back to the left so but I'm gonna go ahead and correct so just reference the flight path indicator here we're on speed. Hornet one two descend to five thousand. Turn left heading three two zero. Vector to right base runway one four. And it's gonna get a little Hornet bit. Hornet one three turn left heading three five zero. 
a little bit wobbly, uh, so just, you know, that wind's pushing us all over the place. And really just focus on that flight path indicator, make sure you're on speed, and use the throttle to control your uh, descent rate. And that's not me just kind of moving the aircraft around, that's just the uh, flight path indicator, or the uh, turbulence kind of moving us around. So just keep it just like you would any normal landing, and just land it in a little bit of right rudder. Right I'll go ahead and extend the uh, the speed brake. I landed on the left side because that aircraft is in the way. And then I'll uh, go ahead and do Hornet heavy one braking. Two, descend to 4, and I'm full back on the el elevators. It's always good to do heavy braking. The Natops actually recommends that. Uh, instead of riding the brakes, so don't ride the brakes. I mean, it's continually, you know, add pressure to the brakes because it actually heats them up uh, and if you ride the brakes all the way down it'll uh, BMS models uh, brake overheating and you'll actually lose your brakes Hornet 1-3, vectors to right base, runway 1-4 so it's good to do Hornet 1-2, descend to 3000, maintain it's good to do hard aggressive braking and those will steering back on Uh, rather than just very light and just riding the brakes all the way down the runway. Same thing when you're taxing, you know. It's better to do a, let the aircraft get up to speed and then do a nice uh, aggressive brake for short intervals. I'd say like maybe two to three seconds so you don't overheat the, uh, the things because they will overheat once that happens. Your brakes are non-functional. The aircraft continues to taxi forward and you uh, there's nothing you can do even if you pull the the parking brake, the uh, hydraulic system is shot. So, all right. So that's how you do a crosswind landing in the Hornet, and that'll set us up for our next flight, which will be a uh, IFR or instrument flight rules flight to Kadena. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys next time.